Okay, let's do a brief little demo on fence post. Now, I have wet all of these and wet them to the point, see I dripped water and I'm gonna let that soak in a minute. Now this is going to be a rather simplistic, now here I am gonna wet the bottom demonstration. Um, here we go. And I wanna make a couple of points before we begin or as we begin. Let me wet this and show you. All right. You see how wet that is? And I'm losing control of it. That is not what I want to do. So if you go in and yours is too wet, I'm simply rinsing my brush, drying my brush and pulling it out. And I will wait and let that water absorb a little more. There's not really a way to tell you how to know what's too wet, too dry, when it's dry enough. It's a matter of just practicing and getting to know your paper, how much water you have in your pigments, how much water you're bringing from your brush. Those are all variables that I can't really verbalize for you. And we're all different. But the point of these exercises as well, this is ultramarine. See now, it doesn't matter what color you're using. But pick a blue that you like. Now see how softly that's beginning to bleed. I can tilt this. You can't see it while it's bleeding. What I want to do, you see here halfway? Nope, you can't see that halfway. Right there, halfway. I want this bleed to come a little over halfway, but not all the way to this edge. So what happens if my bleed comes all the way to the edge? I'm gonna take my brush, either the round brush, clean it, and I'm gonna pull up some of this. Now I'm gonna clean it again, dry it, again and it might take a couple of swoops or I can try a little flat brush and run it down the edge but I want as little color there as I can now in this particular case for all of these the sun's going to be coming this way It's coming that way just because I made that up. Now I brought water over in my brush and that is creeping back in and I'm going to dry it again. If I don't rinse my brush out every couple of swoops, I'm going to put right back down the very pigment that I pulled up. So let's do the next one in green. Now see it's heavy over here. That's because I happen to have more pigment in my brush when I started. It's bleeding out, not particularly evenly because the paper isn't even in dampness. I'm gonna bleed this out. I've got the tip of the brush, see, in the paint. I've got the clean back of the brush on the paper. So the back of the brush is wetting this paper so the pigment has somewhere to bleed. If it doesn't bleed enough, I'm going to try it again. That one, very nice. Now let's do one in um, red. Well, not real red. I'm using alizarin crimson. 
See, my paper has dried. And that's beautiful. Now I'm going to do one in an orange. You can see here the paper starting to dry out. Do that. Now I'm going to go smush all these bottoms in here. So I'll have a nice soft edge when it's time to put grass around it if that's what we choose. Now, when we put in our marks to make it look like a cylinder, these top marks are going to tilt down. When you get to the middle, they'll be flatter. When they get to the bottom, they'll be tilted, not curved, but tilted. So. I'm going to kind of get on the side of my brush. It's, and I'm not making a skinny little line. And what I want to avoid, and I'm going to do it that for you, is making them all equal distances. So some can come all the way over. Some might not. Some might come over here. Some might not. That's too even. I'll stick another one in here. Now I'm going to bleed, smush these together on this side. I'm going to do the same thing with every one of them. Darn, that didn't work. That didn't work. I'm going to dry my brush. I'm going to get a little more green on it. Now, this paper has more water on it. You can see it spreading out more. That's good. Then I'm going to do here. Now, I didn't have enough pigment on my brush. Let me tilt that. Can you see? So I didn't get a dark space. I did get a nice dark line. More pigment. This is when you just work it. Here it comes with the red. Uh-oh, too wet. See, I lost control of it. I'm going to have to let that dry and the orange dry. Before I continue here, I do want this to be very dry. So I'm going to blow dry these two. I'm going to let these dry by themselves. Now notice I tested it just gently. I'm going to mix. I'll show you how I mix mine. I'm going to get my green, if you can see this. I'm going to get some cred or crimson. And together, now that looked like it was mighty easy. You're going to have to mess around. If it's too red, add a little green. If it's too green, add a little red. If you have a brown, use it. I just like mixing my colors. So I've got my brush saturated in brown. And I'm going to start at the top. Actually, I'm going to add more water. Uh, enough water that instead of painting this brown, I'm glazing it. So I'm laying a wash of brown water over the entire surface. That's going to dry. You'll be able to see it. Once again, I want this to be the light part. It's relatively easy to bring this back to light because there's no pigment under here. Remember, we just left that side to be white. I'm going to do the same thing here. See, I'm not, I'm not scrubbing. I'm laying it on my brush and I'm, I guess, let's use the word placing it. 
I'm going to do the same thing here. Now, the reason I want this dry before I do the next coat is so that all of my colors don't merge together and get lost. I want them to blend, but I want you to be able to see the initial th that we put on underneath. So yes, I can see blue coming through here. I can see green coming through here. And I am remembering, not doing a very good job of it, but remembering to soften these edges. All right, that one's about ready. So I'm going to mix some more. Standard brown, red and green. Okay, more water on my brush. And I'm going to lay, whoops, that's too much water. So I'm going to add more pigment. And I'm going to do the same thing here. Now, what I didn't notice, I don't know if you noticed it or not, is I forgot to put the bands in here. That's just fine. We've got lots of opportunity to do that, but while I'm thinking about it, I will go back and do it on the orange. Straight, see, tilting down, tilting up, and smushing out the bottom. That is really blending beautifully. Yay, watercolor. That's beautiful. Now, back over here, see how light that has dried. That is drying. That is, so again, I'm gonna take a second and I'm gonna blow dry all of these until they really are just bone dry. Okay, we're dry as we can be. Oops, sorry, don't do that. We're dry as we can be. And you can see the green coming through, the blue. You can see the marks stronger here than you can here. Actually, you can barely see them here. You don't see any here. And I haven't put the brown over here. And I'm going to do that right now. So it can be drying. And that's not enough pigment. So I'll add more. It's wet now. But again, remember, I'm not going to scrub it because I don't want to reconstitute what's underneath. There we go. And that will be drying. We're going to come back over here. Now, the first step we did, we wet the paper, let it soak in. Then we put the color on it. Then we put the strokes on it. So that would be three. Well, I'll come back. Let me pay attention to what I'm doing. So now this is much darker. I'm being careful. And now I'm on the tip of the brush. And this is tricky. This is like drawing. I'm just drawing these lines over. Some can come all the way. You don't want all of them to. Some part way. Some half. See what I'm doing here? Now, I'm going to make some a little thicker. So it doesn't look like it's nothing but scribble. And I'm being careful with this. I, again, I don't know how to verbalize to you what I'm doing. Damp, damp brush, clean brush. And I'm going to bleed this out a little bit. Now, I'm going to leave that alone. Let me tilt it so you can see. 
I'll come back and make adjustments later if I want to. I'm going to do the same thing right here on this side. Now, you notice through all of these steps, I've been careful with my edges. And I'm on the tip of the brush, I'm drawing some over. These are still tilting down. I don't want equal distance. It'll straighten out as I get to the middle and it will become a tilt, slight tilt up as I come down here. No two are going to be the same. Rinse my brush, dry my brush, and I'm going to spread this out just a little. Maybe not even everywhere. If this gets too flat over here, too much paint, look, that's all I have to do. Can you see Kevin I, there? We'll do this one. Now this did not have the marks underneath. So I'm going to go down the edge. That was a mistake. We're going to leave it there. You know, by the time you finish your fence post, nobody's going to know that mistake. And I'll show you why, because when we come back and dry it, we will make lighter or I can pull some out. This is a little trickier. Can you see what I'm doing with the flat brush? I'm going to come through here. And I'm going to mess this up a little. That's too wet. Go blend this. Now we're working on the fence post right now, and this just about does the fence post. But what I want to show you is the reason we're leaving this light. Again, being careful with my edge. And we're going to put some grass in. Now, I'm not making good grass here. All I want to do is show you how the contrast here very little contrast over there. But see how that contrast really pops that light source out? So let's do that over here. Now, if my marks in the fence post are still too wet, this is too wet, so I'm going to do it for you. And it bleeds out, or it's supposed to bleed out. You know, let me try it over here. That's supposed to run into the grass, you know. When you want to do it right, it doesn't go right. When you want to show a mistake, it doesn't do that way either. Oops. Now over here, I don't have as strong of a contrast. So you can see a bold light source on these, but not as bold here. So the more contrast, the brighter your light source is going to be. This is just flat out yucky. So I'm going to pull some of that up. And you can see the reddish underneath. So none of these should look like a just a flat brown rectangle on your page. You see the difference? These have the texture. Now I'm going to pull this out a little more. Now, 
you've heard blossoms and cauliflowers and all that. If you want to try one, drop a little water. If your paper's too dry, it won't work. If it's too wet, it might not work, but you'll see it in a minute. We're going to pretend the sky's blue. Now, see what'll happen when I put these in context. What happens? Cool. All righty. There you go. So, Let's see if we can remember. First step, water. Second step, color. Third step, color with strokes. Fourth step, wash it with the brown. Fifth step, detail it out with your brown. And there's not a right or wrong. I know I made this look easy, um, but it is a little tricky and it does take time. So enjoy painting some fence posts. I will come back later in addition to this exercise and do some puddles. And then we will do a painting with fence post and puzzles. But for now, practice your fence post and I'll see you later.